Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Okay, D4. We're gonna go for D5. Yeah, that changes everything. Knight there. Now, we've seen the knights develop. In what way do we respond? Always with the opposite knight, the easiest fundamental. This knight controls those two squares. This knight mirrors that and controls those two as well. So we're gonna bring our other knight out. We're gonna bring our bishop out, controlling the center. This is always, hey, that's a trade. Boom, instant, instant. And what do we do? We wanna bring our bishop to this square. Hey, that's a trade. Do we wanna double our pawns? Generally, no. Generally now, so we go here, and uh, hey, whoa, that's a trade, and whoa, that's a pawn, and whoa, that's an attack on my queen. Let's bring it back to safety. Hopefully, none of these moves have been too outrageous so far. I mean, you guys see my point. All we're doing is uh, is getting these habits down. F five, okay, I'm gonna take it, and now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get castled. I have to get castled. I want to do it ASAP. I want to bring my rooks here next. Those are my, my two next rook moves. I want to play h6. Okay, he attacks my, my center. I'm going to probably start with this rook to react to that. Okay, now he goes here. Um, I think I've always maintained just keep the queen in the center is the best way to go. So one of these two squares in the center makes a lot of sense. Even queen back here would be fine because that's often a square that we, we start with. Okay, takes us on c7. We're still going to stay in the center here. Yeah, this guy's really aggro, that's for sure. Okay, takes in here. Well, you guys know that is a uh, that is a capture. Anytime we got a capture, we take it. We take it, we take it, we take it, we take it. And hey, that's a pawn that we can capture as well. You're going to take my pawn, I'm going to take yours. And we're going to finish development. That's the only piece we haven't developed. So after this, I'll be looking to play h6. So go back to those fundamentals, it might look like so much has happened, but think about the fundamentals. We, we haven't moved our rook yet. We always develop it to e8. We wanna play h6. And we wanna maybe make some random pawn moves. So I finally have a moment. I'm gonna play h6. It might look like a nothing move, but believe me, this is so key. You're not gonna get back rank mated at any point this game and it's, it's important. Okay, queen there, we're gonna take it. That's a trade. Now. What do we do? It's an end game, guys. Immediate reaction. Let's bring the king in and let's use the rook to attack some pawns. Okay, a trade. We're going to take that. Now, end game. King rush to the center. We know it's all about the center. And even if you have no clue how to play king upon end game, and trust me, you will not have any idea. What do we know is that we want to bring the king into the middle of the board. Okay, once the king's in the middle, push your pawns. We don't have to be able to calculate well here. All we're gonna do is, is basically push as many pawns as we can. Okay, he goes here, I'm gonna react to that. He goes here, I'm just gonna play the same move as him. Okay, he goes here, I'm just gonna push all my pawns, every single one. So you got the king in the middle, push all the pawns. Well, hey, that's a capture. Okay, he pushes there. Push him, baby. I haven't done anything special. King in the middle and push him, baby. Every single time. And this is going to be a pass pawn. So I'm going to keep pushing him. Oh, he goes there. I'm going to take. And king takes pawns. These are, these are principles you can apply at the 400 level. Hey, that's a capture. We're going to take that. What do we talk about, guys, when we have a pass pawn? Push him, baby. Push him, baby. We get a queen here. Now, we got this. We're going to get a queen. 
And we're going to use the staircase technique, boys. Two queens. And now we staircase. And we staircase. And we staircase. And we checkmate. And we checkmate. And you know what, guys? How disastrous would it have been if the guy had actually played this? <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> that would have been another draw. Two draws in a row. So we're, we're, we're happy right now. We're, we're lucky that didn't happen. Oh, Shed Ninja. Uh-oh, 618. 618, but we ain't scared. We're following the fundamentals here. The fundamentals from Amon Hamilton. Now, by the way, guys, after E4, uh, people have played D5 and people have played E5 against me. I, I think maybe never have I seen this move. I'm not sure, but I think maybe never. I don't think I've ever seen this before. <laughs> He might completely KO me. I haven't seen many, uh, many C5s. Oh, F6. Okay. We got a suspicious looking move there. But it's not going to affect my, my gameplay. My gameplay is going to stay the same. I got my knights out. Bishop. I'm going to castle next. I'm going to play D3. Okay. We're going to castle. Just having the, a series of opening moves that you can play more or less every time and not get in a terrible position um, is, is already valuable. Already valuable. Uh, D5. Now, usually I would say I take with the pawn if there's another pawn. But otherwise, I think I've taken with the knight every time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Um, I usually start with the knight, so... Um, if there was like a pawn here and you played d5, we would start with the pawn and then the knight. But if it lists fits free, then you usually start with the knight. Okay, it goes bishop here. I don't really have a trade to do, so I'm going to finish like this. Finish my development. Um, get my other piece out. I always put it to e3. And remember, if he takes, I'm going to take back. Hey, that is a exchange. We're going to take that. Five gifted subs from Red Hot Mexican. Very appreciated, man. Wow. Um, let's go here. Okay, we're gonna get our bishop out. Um, he takes me. We're gonna take right back. Red Hot cheers. Thanks a lot, man. Um, okay, he's attacking our bishop. Now, generally, when we get attacked, we're just gonna go back here. We're not gonna look to get fancy, take pawns. Um, whenever we get attacked, we go back. We got attacked again with b5. And it wasn't a free pawn, we would go back once again to b3. So our next move is like rook here, queen there, rook over. And these might not be the best moves in this position. In fact, I'm sure they're not. But they're fundamentally solid. Rooks to the middle of the board can't go wrong. What are we going to do after those three moves? We're going to get an escape square for our king. And then we're going to start pushing some pawns over here. This is, uh, this is what we're doing. We're going queen d2, rook d1, h3, and probably a4. If I had to predict my next... Bunch of moves. Depends what he does a little bit, but more or less, if uh, he doesn't do anything too scary or he doesn't make any threats, those are going to be my my next moves. Was a six? Don't really know what that is. Um, I think this is where we just go rook here, um, knight. Bishop against two bishops. Do I even know what that means? Probably not. Um, you don't need to think too specific. Just think very general. But this, you know, just do generally good things and they will generally work out. <laughs> That's the idea. A generally good thing, rook to the middle. Let's hope it generally works out. Bishop back. Okay, I got attacked by a pawn. This has happened before. I always drop the bishop back. Okay, a5. Again, most of the time that this a pawn is pushed and threatened that, I've always gone here. So I'm just going to keep reacting in the exact same way. 
Okay, it goes there. I'm going to get my h3 move. Okay, and now after g6, it's finally our turn. You know, we've, we've completed the development. We've got our escape square. Um, we've made a random pawn move over here. Usually I just um, continue making making pawn moves for, for a bit. Okay, there's a trade here. I'm gonna, gonna take it. And remember guys, it's not really what level do I include tactics. Um, as in, you know, oh, when you're 800, all of a sudden you have to use tactics. Because um, I'm just saying that this is level one. Start out with these rules. It'll get you to a certain reading destination, whatever that might be. Um, and just once you've, you know, had a, a lot of experience with this, then you start going to the next level. It doesn't have to be at a certain rating goal. It can be any time. It can be any time. You could do it after 10 games. I think my goal is to play, you know, 70 to 100 games with these rules just to really get the fundamentals down and then play 70 to 100 games with the next set of rules that we add on top and uh, i want a large sample size so that you really practice over and over and over the exact same thing um okay let's go d4 i mean it kind of hangs my pawn but it's a pawn push in the center and i need to make some pawn pushes i've already finished my development See what he does. I will take this next probably. Okay, he goes knight back. That's quite the move. Um, I suppose uh, this is not the easiest move to really notice. So I wouldn't blame anyone that <laughs> didn't take this as an exchange, but I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. It is an exchange. And so is this. And that is a free piece, unfortunately. But taking this for free would have to come with the fact that you know the king cannot take you if you have it defended. And that rook acts as a defender here. So you would have to understand that these two have enough firepower to take that rook, but it is a free piece, and so we have to take it. My bishop was more powerful than that knight, but the reason we're taking it is because part of this series is, you know, at the beginning level, if there's a fair trade, bishop for knight, bishop for bishop, rook for rook, queen for queen, we take it immediately. Pawn takes pawn, etc. All trades are good. All trades are good. Or all trades you have to do. That's that's the thing. As long as they're equal or better for you. Equal or better for you. Okay, king to um king to f7. Uh I don't know. Let's let's try to attack pawns, rooks to the middle of the board. Um we're attacking this pawn here. Queen takes e4, um, probably take, take the pawn I was attacking. Um, and you know, the idea is basically once you get a pawn like this, uh, hey, that's a sneaky move by him. That's a sneaky move by him. Um, you know, I think, I think this is actually a very reasonable tactic to fall for. I mean, he goes here. I've actually talked about this. You react to your opponent's moves. He goes here. I take that because I totally missed that this is hanging. Like, he plays this move, I take it, and he takes that. It's like, wait a minute. He's got a free queen in the middle of the board. I have to take that. That's the idea. Oh, that worked out for me. I'm a genius. You see, you follow my rules, and tactics are going to work out. So what do I want to do? Basically, I okay, we get checked. We got to move our king. Click the king. There's only one dot, only one square. King h2. It's because we made that move. Nice and safe. And our goal is to take this pawn. And why do we want to take this pawn? Because now we just have pass pawns. We just want to push it. That's it. Push, 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 push. That's the goal. That's the goal. So yeah, now that we have pass pawns, uh, our goal is just to try to push them as far as they can go. Um, so we're going to move this out of the way and basically make room for, for this pawn. Make room for this pawn. 
Okay, this can be taken, captured towards the center. But yeah, our, our goal is just to, to push, 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 push. And you notice how I'm, I'm not actually backing this pawn up the way I should be. I should be putting a rook behind it, but you know we don't necessarily have the, the best technique. Okay, now he's putting a pawn in the middle. Let's take it middle of the board. So I'm obviously not going to have the best technique. Let's uh, protect this pawn. We're going to try to maybe get the other, um, the other pieces. Threatening our bishop. We don't want to lose it for free. Trying to bring it to e3 back to control the center. And we ended up going down on time there. We end up going down on time. But that's okay. It's going to happen. You're not going to be faster than your opponent literally every game you've ever played in your life. But uh, I pointed this out a lot. Please take note. How many times have you guys seen me get a pass pawn and you guys are probably looking at me push it and you guys are all thinking, oh man, black just needs to go here and then the pawn can't move at all. You're right. But have you seen my opponents ever do that? Like when I push a pass pawn, have you ever seen my opponents stop it? No. It's like people have no idea what to do. As soon as you start pushing a pass pawn, they're just like freeze. I have pushed a pass pawn to become a queen so easily multiple games i don't know why but you just push a pawn like at this elo push the pawn to the end it's a very effective strategy and it's very direct it says look i want an extra queen and i'm gonna go get one most of the time the opponent doesn't even stop it okay uh we got a canadian e4 you guys know what we're doing e5 Okay, knight there, and we're going to do the opposite. Control the central squares that that knight controls. Knight to f3, we're going to do the same. So this should really be an ingrained pattern. When your opponent develops one knight, develop the opposite knight. If it's this knight, come out with this knight to match. Grams with 100 bits and 10 gifted subs from FK Gun. Very appreciated, guys. The support at the same time. All right, East Castle, well, you know we are as well, ASAP. And we're going with d6 next. And look. This guy must have studied my fundamentals. Look at the lad go. Look at him go. Beautiful chess. Queen d2. Uh, that one's looking a little rough. So I get the feeling that this is a viewer that can't remember the habits properly. Because it literally looked like he's planning to play rook there next, and his queen's on d2, just like me, except his bishop's blocked. <laughs> he's probably realizing that right now. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Let's go there, and it looks like I'm going to beat you to the finish line there, bud. <laughs> Got to build those habits, my guy. <laughs> uh, okay, we're bringing the bishop back. Why? Because we're being attacked, and this is a nice central square. He didn't print out the habits. That's right, guys. Exclamation mark habits info. You guys can take that thing, have it open on another screen. To make sure you don't forget it. And right now, the reason he's making these mistakes is he doesn't have it open. He has the chess.com open and he has the stream open. And the stream is blocking the habits info uh, image. So he can't see the habits because he's got the stream open. That's the problem. Bring the rook to the middle. You guys know where our next one's going to be? It's going to be this one, an escape square for the king. Okay, knight there. Don't have to react right away. I'm going to go here for this escape square. My next move is probably going to be this. Yep. We'll kick this knight. Now we've reached like almost the pinnacle. We're, we're going to do a few more uh, random pawn moves over here, but you know, we're kicking this knight out. We're going to keep doing some pawn moves, but we're about to play knight there. That's a nice central move. 
going to take back and also this pawn push um, as soon as we can. Okay, that's a capture. That's a capture and let's get our knight in. I'll take with the bishop. Probably I'll keep doing um, these pawn moves. I want to play like this to support the, the central push. Um, but next turn, if he, depending on what he does, I'll, I'll take this knight. That's a capture. Captures are great, especially when you're up material. And would you look at that? That is a free piece. We have to take that. We have to. Oh, and would you look at that? That's a trade. We have to do that too. Okay, and let's try to play d5, pawns in the center, always good. Yeah, this bishop just went, you know, one, two, three, and picked up a ton of pieces. There we go, that's a capture. We're gonna take that, and I think we just, I think we finish uh, just playing in the middle here with pawn to d5, um, he takes it. Um, again, I think bishop takes or knight takes both make sense. I'm gonna choose the knight because Generally, if we had to take back, I would probably say the knight. Um, it's better than the bishop, more often than not. Meant to take free pieces, loafs, not pawns. You got to read those rules again. Okay, queen takes a6. That, that guy, that dirty guy. Uh, let's play bishop move, attack the, uh, attack the center. Okay, that's a trade. We're, we're happy to take that. Now, if I was playing white, I would be going for pushing baby. That would be my plan, you know? Okay, he defends his pawn there. It's actually a, a, a good idea. Um, let's go for a check. Okay, let's go for another check. And after this, we don't really see the the way to continue, but um, you know, pawn uh, and peace moves in the middle of the board look good. Let's just say here, support the, the queen and rook together. Okay, he's starting to uh, push the pawn. That's good to see. That's good to see. Let's... Uh, I mean, we just made this threat to take this pawn. We just made this threat. Bishop takes h6. We're going to go ahead and take it. Oh, you can take free pawn slopes. It's, it's just like you, you don't have to. It's not like required. You know, you're going to see some. You're going to miss some. Depends. So that's a check. King up. Again, I have this safe square. I'm not getting ever back rank made here. Okay, and he's starting to do what he should be doing, which is pushing, pushing, pushing that pawn. And it's very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous. So, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to try to deal with it. Uh, let's go knight here. Let's attack the queen. Like, I'm very close to mate here, but it's not easy to go for a mate without, like, blundering a piece. We don't want to lose something for free. We don't want to lose something for free. Okay, so we got to guard this. Let's go queen there. Okay, a7. Um, say, cover it with the rook. Okay, he's, he's queening. We're obviously going to take it. I mean, it is a queen. It is a queen. But rook h1, queen e2. Guys, relax. Of course, there's going to be tactics. We're not dealing with that. You guys are expecting a 400 to find tactic? <laughs> Absolutely not. Queen back, hitting our rook. Let's go back to a uh, move that controls the center. Okay, that's another trick. It's actually really annoying. Let's go back here.
Oh, and we do, we do take free pieces. We do take free pieces. <laughs> well, when I said we do take free pieces, I meant it, guys. I meant it. Anytime you're offering me a freebie, I'm going to take it. Okay, let's clean up his pawn. Let's take that. Spending this pawn. Let's take it. And now, as long as we do checks, we, you know, we are going to find a checkmate here. Checks, 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 checks. Make sure you're always checking at the end or you might stalemate. 575. And let's continue with our openings here. Okay, we've seen this before. And the nice thing about this is we just react with the opposite knight as always. As always, he goes here. We use this knight now. Okay, we're going to continue with bishop to c4. So, we've seen this. We know that generally we get our two knights out, we put our bishop out, and we castle. Um, if he goes here, which is very common, we always trade. And castle ASAP. Okay, and then he goes d5. We're going to take that. And how many times? Well, it's starting to become a habit. How many times have we seen d5 being played? I mean, every time it's played, we take. And then there's always an e5, e5 pawn hanging. Have you guys noticed that? It really is hanging every single time. Okay, that's a trade. We're going to take that. Let's get a pawn in the center. Opens up our bishop. Next idea, we're going to bring the rook over. And we're going to bring the bishop out to one of those two squares. Oh, that's an exchange. Always take those immediately. And bishop out, controlling the center. We're going to go queen d2. Slide the rook over. Oh, but if there's, a, if there's an exchange, we'll take it. Bring the queen up. Slide the rook over, h3, and then some random pawn moves. This is the same formula for every single game, guys. Hopefully, this is uh, something you honestly are getting used to. Because I am taking every trade that's available. I'm going to take a free pawn if it's sitting in the center. We're going to get our rook to the open file. h3 next. We do not let this happen. Oh, hey, there's another trade. And in this position, a lot of you guys might, might get carried away. It's all sorts of possible moves, but... If we follow our fundamentals, we know that there's no way we can do anything until we have that escape square there. H3, super important. Now, we say an endgame is when queens are off the board. Am I going to run my king to the middle here? No, queens are still on the bar board. It might be an endgame, but the fact that queens are there means we just don't do it. Okay, we need some random uh, pawns over here. We've done this, you know, maybe can centralize the queen a little bit more. Um, Let's go here. Uh, okay, he's going queen there. Now, we got to use our queen and we got to attack some of his pawns. That's pretty much the main the main thing that I would suggest here. So uh, I'm going to go here and see if I can get my queen involved in any of these squares. Queen is attacking the, the center here. And at this point, you can't really calculate what's going to happen. I'm going to lose pawns. He's going to lose pawns. Who knows? Um, but I think in the end game, it's better to be active than passive. So if I can just go and attack things and take things, maybe I'm going to end up losing as a result, but, um, there, there we go. Take the check. End game with the king in the game. Yeah. The one thing is with Queens though, we, we don't want the king out. So there has to be no Kings or no Queens. Sorry. Also no Kings, no Kings in the middle. Not when this one's here. Okay. King there. Nice of our opponent to be breaking one of the cardinal rules. Breaking one of the cardinal rules. If that pawn was there, just like our pawn is there, you notice how we're both threatening the exact same thing. But hang on. If black does it, we don't get mated. That's because a long time ago, we took this moment, and I could have played a lot of things here. I could have started pushing my pawns, gotten right into it. But no, just take a small time out every single game and always play h3, and it'll just never happen to you. It'll never happen to you. King a8. No escape. Mate in one. Queen d8. Mate. GG. 
And we're playing a 5A8. Sid. Okay. Okay. Knight out. We always bring the opposite knight. We're going to have to make this game one of the participation games. Because this is going to be a potential another KO. What are we going to do when we see pawn there? We're going to we're going to take it. We got to take. What's our next move going to be? Depends what he does. But the last time, do you guys remember the last time this happened? We got absolutely wrecked. Who remembers? We got KO'd so badly in this opening. After e5, where does our knight go? Can we go here, 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 here? Nope. We got to go here. Who remembers us getting absolutely destroyed in this line? Okay, well, we're going to bring our other knight out. These, these 600s memorizing their theory, you know? Get out of here. Get lost. Get lost. Bishop to c4. Okay, now, what did we do last time? Well, I think... Our knight ended up here. Uh, our bishop, we got to put it here. This is the next one. We can't get our knight out. Oh, it's just rough all around. All of our principles are out the window. And that's because after f4, we, we, we took it. We took it. And we lost all of our control here. This is rough. So we're going to move our bishop back. So the Vienna has actually beaten us pretty uh, pretty badly, actually, pretty badly. Um, okay, I mean, the knight needs to get out, but this pawn needs to happen. There's so many things. Knight here needs to happen. Um, pawn here needs to happen because we simply need to get that bishop out. But it's tough here, guys. It's tough. And I think this was the exact same thing that happened the last time we played this opening. It's, it's really tough to play um, against openings like this because... Um, it's sort of something you need to practice against. You need to practice against. Um, you can't just go in with those same fundamentals and play against something which is designed to be very aggressive early on. Like f4, it's designed to take the center and look at the center. So I'm going to play d6. Uh, i got to get my bishop out. I'm going to castle. You know, it's not the end of the world, but uh, there's not many positions where I... I really survive here. So we're going to castle probably into death. <laughs> we're going to castle into death here. Oof. Where are the KOs, guys? Who sees them? Who sees them? Yeah, this is an opening where uh, a lot of the fundamental or the rules won't be followed properly because of the type of opening it is. Um, it doesn't let us do that. It doesn't let us do that. Okay, so we want to like finish development, I think. Uh, Bishop controlling the center. Now we can start think about thinking about uh, kicking out that knight next. Let's do that. And getting our queen up and bringing our rooks to the middle like that. Is h6 not good to play first there? Uh, h6 would be a fine move. I'm just completing development. Um, it's hard to ever really say that completing development is something to advise against. So yeah, I completed development if you played h6 first too. Wouldn't really be, wouldn't be bad at all. Okay, Brooks over. That's my plan. A4. Damn, he's already so developed. He's on the random pawn move part of the game. Holy smokes, I'm way behind here. I'm way behind here. He's already on the random pawn move. So I'm still getting developed, buddy. I'm still trying to catch up here.
Oh, you see? He's got his escape square. He's got his random pawn moves. He's way ahead of me. He's way ahead of me. G4. Yikes. Attacking that bishop. Let's just go back. We want to keep attacking the center. That's the idea. Yeah, if we stay stay attacking the center. That's the idea. The two bishops, they're not gonna not gonna switch diagonals if they don't have to. Okay, knight there. Knight to b5. Now it's time for some of my pawn moves. I'm gonna start with a few. First of all, I'm gonna start with d5. Whenever your random pawn move can still be a center pawn safely, it's usually a pretty good thing. And I think I'll kick this knight out on the next turn. The main reason that the uh, the random pawn move usually happens on the queen side is because the king is always uh, castled here. Um, okay, knight there threatens my rook. Again, taking not usually the the idea because what you see, when you see something like this, your rook is attacked, you end up reacting to it. So you think, oh man, I got I got to deal with this. I'm gonna move my rook. Two pieces for rook is not fully etched in yet. The one thing we have is if knight g5, bishop there, we know that the sacrifice is no good, but we're still starting out. Generally, if a piece of higher value gets attacked by knight, it's not the easiest to see that you should take this bishop and, and go for that. So we're just going to move our rook to safety. We're going to play nice and easy. Rook to safety, and now it's up to him to react. And okay, if he leaves the bishop hanging again, we're going to remind him, buddy, pawns capture diagonally. Pawns. Pawns are very dangerous. They're one of the, the pieces that captures uh, in a different way than they move normally. So always sneaking up on you. A5, attacking my bishop. Am I going to give that away? No, I'm going to play bishop here. And we're actually happy to see that. His A5 move really helped me out here. Wow, what a move. Okay, well, when you see a move like that, that's a capture. I'm going to do that first. I'm going to do the capture first. I'm going to do this capture. Always got to react to the move they just played. So it goes here. We got to move our knight. Hey, this is a very, very na natural square to go to. It attacks the center. Knight c6. How did a5 help me out? I was just saying because I got to move the bishop here, which was attacking the knight. And also more trades. I'm up a piece, so more trades are good. Now we're going to play here, and that's because we're finishing our development. Now we're finally done. We finally completed our entire development, guys. We did it. We did it. Okay, time for some random pawn moves. Let's go here. Whoa! Holy smokes. Okay, let's take it. We, we got to be taking those. And I don't know, let's bring our rook to e6 here. Try to make some threats. That looks like a pawn. Random move stage. Yeah, there might be some tricks here, but no need to, to bother doing those. It looks like he's going to um, lose the rook for free. And do we get in with some checks? Check. Hey, that queen was hanging. I didn't even notice that when I played queen d2 check. Let's take it. Thank goodness that wasn't stalemate, eh? That was a little bit close. White only has two moves on the board. Your fundamentals. Let's get back into the chest. Let's not forget any of this stuff. This night, you guys know the drill. It's going to be this one. Okay, bishop to c4. We're just going to go here. We're going to get our knights out. We're going to get our bishop out. Okay, and hey, that's a, an exchange. We're going to take that straight away and go for 
d6. Oh, we can castle first, castle ASAP. d6 next. It's all good. And oh, would you look at that? d4. That's a capture. We're going to do it straight away. Pawn takes, and now it's our turn. I think we go for d6. We want to play rook here. We want to get this bishop up, but we know not to put the bishop and knight there because of d5. So we're going to be extra careful about that. We're going to be extra careful about that. Okay, start with rook e8. But um, this move next is not necessarily something we're going to do. So if we're not going to do this, bishop d7 makes more sense. But hey, my brain's telling me that looks like a free pawn in the middle. Let's go. Knight takes e4. Now we've taken a free pawn in the middle like this before. So we're going to take it. And we're going to see what happens. We are going to see what happens. Rook takes e4. I'll give you a little volume on this one there, uh, um, Orange Noof. But we're going to turn the, turn the volume back down after this one. Sure. This is just a, uh, a, a this is a a vibe song for the uh, for the energy. So, rookie one, that's a trade. That's a trade. We're gonna take that. We have to. We have to. We gotta finish our development. We're not quite done yet. Okay, bishop to control the center. Bishop to control the center. Oh, is that a free piece for us, guys? Yes, it is. Oh, every free piece we take, the music goes a little bit higher. Every free piece, the vibes go up. More free pieces, please. Okay, let's make sure to get this escape square. We don't want to get checkmated on the back rank. Okay, we want to go to the center. I can't go here, so I'm going to go to the safe square, e5. That's the idea. Okay, I'll bring the rook to the middle. Bring the rook to the middle. The same vibes. Now I've got my development completed. Some pawn move time over here. That's a trade. That's a trade. And now it's an end game, guys. It's an end game. King to the middle. King to the middle. He's attacking my bishop. We're just going to go back. Still attacking the center. King to the middle. We can start pushing some pawns. That's right, potent. That's right. Hey, that looks like a pawn for me. Oh, a check. Okay. That's a check. Got to move the knight. Let's go back to the center. Okay, let's use the king. Remember, in the end game, we use the king as much as we can. Look at his king. It's not. It's not getting into the middle of the board. We we got to uh, we got to show him how it's done here. Let's move this knight out of the way. King, king, king. Use your king in the end game, guys. It will work. It will work. We're, we're taking everything from him. Everything from him. Okay. We'll take that. Oh, he got us with a fork. I can't use those. That's not fair. Well, good thing I'm using my uh, good thing I'm using my king, guys. We got a pass pawn. Let's push him, baby. Let's push him, baby. How many times have you seen this, guys? Every single time that you push him, it just becomes a queen. Like no one ever stops the pawn. I'm telling you, start pushing your pass pawns. It's like a it's like a surefire way to win. Push him. Push him. We're going to make a push for 600. 
Oh, we're playing at 640. This guy's strong. Okay, let's stick to the fundamentals. Not gonna panic. Not gonna look at his rating and get uh, concerned about how much better than us he might be. We're just gonna stick to what we know. Stick to what we know. Yeah, he's a lot better than us. <laughs> yeah, he's a lot better than us. I think we're getting destroyed here. <laughs> Our fundamentals didn't work. Well, guys, this is uh, not a position where it's very easy to follow fundamentals because we are getting clapped. Knight c7 is a huge threat. What are we going to do? Well, we've got to prevent knight c7. I mean, it's not going to be pretty, but uh-oh. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. E5. Oh, no. Pawn takes. Uh, our knight's got to move. Let's put it in the center of the board. Knight in the middle. I mean, hey, that's... At least we're following some fundamentals. Pawn push. What's going on here? Pawn push. Uh, we got to take that. This isn't, this isn't going well for us, guys. This isn't going well. Our king's got to move. It's just a disaster. It's just a disaster. Okay, well, let's let's take this. Uh, yep. We got some interesting fundamentals on display here. Okay, our knight gets attacked. Now, I'm just going to go back, uh still exerting pressure on the center. Even though the opening didn't go our way, we're still going to try to play the moves that we would normally play. Um, in some in some kind of capacity. In some kind of capacity. So, like, this bishop can go here, attacking the center. That's still an unavailable square for us, getting developed. This rook can still go to the middle. And, uh, hey, guys, you remember the, uh, the thing we said uh, the other day about, or not the other day, the other match about when our king's in the middle, what did we say? We said... Get that king to safety as fast as possible. So those are going to be my next my next moves. We learned that just today. Learned that just today. So I'm getting the heck out of here. Okay, um, that's a trade. So we're going to go for it, and I'm going to continue executing that plan. Getting my king to safety. All right. Step one complete. King is safe. King is safe. Now, I'm probably going to kick the knight out uh, with this move. Also, my queen needs to return to the center of the board. Remember, it's all about the center. So I need to, to get this queen back into the action. Okay. So escape score for my king. I'm sort of bringing things back to maybe a more, uh, a more understandable level. but. Uh, h6, I'm still playing uh, according to, to how you guys might expect. And let's get this queen back in. You know, we need, we need to bring this queen back to the middle of the board. Okay, g4. I'm going to bring this queen to the middle. Here we go. So I've, I've actually, I don't know how I did it, but, you know, somehow I got a, a fairly regular setup. Um, I mean, I am down material. I, my whole situation is not looking good here. But at least I've got a presentable position. Okay. Uh, my knight's being attacked. I have to move it somewhere. The center is always desirable, but unfortunately it's not possible here. So um, if I have to choose a square that's not the center, I'd probably choose this one or this one based on our games in the past. Uh, I'll just go here. This looks solid enough. G6. What a move. Okay. Well... I guess I'll take it. It is a it is a free pawn from our opponent there. Um, rook there, and well, I am gonna take it, guys. That is a capture that I can make. And remember, as long as you're constantly checking every single turn, where can your pieces go? That's not only an exchange, but it's a good one for me. So we are gonna take that immediately. Okay, now he decides to take with the knight. You know what? Let's put the knight back. Cover those central squares. Cover those central squares, the fundamentals. Okay. 
God, somehow we got even material again. I don't know how. I don't know how. We got to get the 600 hype train going. Our own, our own hype train. Okay, bishop here. Now, again, uh, I've got my escape score for my king. Rook's in the middle. I think at this point, it's time for these pawn pushes. It's time for these pawn pushes. Okay, the queen comes out. I don't see like a particular threat, so I'm probably going to keep pushing the, the pawns, I would say. This is sort of in this style. Oh, he goes here. Hang on a sec. What's going on here? Okay, so I'm going to take this because it's a free piece. Free pieces we take. Free pieces we take. Um, so it happens to be a check. He's going to have to try to get out of this. Okay, and now what I'm noticing is that he's attacking my knight. And my knight's defending my rook. So if I move my knight, I lose my rook. It's not acceptable. How can I get out of this? Can my rook go somewhere to defend my knight? No. In fact, can any of my pieces go somewhere to defend my knight? No. Well, this is kind of a, a tricky position. I, I just won a piece of his, but there's nothing I can do to defend my knight here. And there's nothing I can do with my knight that still saves my rook. So I have to lose something. I have to lose something. It's better to lose the uh, knight than the rook. I think we know that. But the question is, where do I want to go? What move do I want to make? Um, queen to the, the center of the board makes a lot of sense. Like, well, not that because it hangs it, but just some move like that 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 um, covers the center. So a queen e5 makes a lot of sense to me, trying to like trick him. You know, If he takes me, then I get to save my knight. If he takes me, I get to save my knight. He's not falling for that. Okay, it's time to keep pushing pawns, guys. I'm going to play d4. Um, whenever you can push pawns and you know you can use a center pawn, go for it. I'm probably going to keep pushing these pawns if I can. That's going to be the follow-up. Okay, he goes here. Uh, it's a good thing we don't know what this is because uh, if we did, it'd be bad. <laughs> So we're going to go b4, keep pushing. You see, we're benefiting by our own rules here. Be benefiting from our own rules. Okay, queen here. He's attacking our rook. We've got to do something about this. Uh, I'm going to keep the rook position in the center here. And I'm going to move up and attack his queen. Okay, he's checking my king. Hey, lucky I have that square. Is it lucky though? Not really. This is calculated. That's why we always play h6 every game. So any check on the last rank, we always can move up to safety. Always move to safety. Okay, let's see what he's going to do. He finally develops the knight again, which is a good sign for him. Um, I think I'm probably going to keep pushing these pawns over here. He checks me. My king is kind of in trouble here. I can't go back anywhere. Um, well, I think I almost have to go here. I almost have to go here. This doesn't look great, but um, this knight move uncovered the idea of like rook check. Now it's like, how do I, how do I get out of this? Queen h8, and he's he's coming for me here. He's coming for me here. So how do I, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? He's looking to mate me, guys. I'm going to bring my knight here. Still controlling the center, but this is not looking good. I'm doing this to try to run my king away. He's checking me. We're going to go here. We got to get him to disconnect. Yeah, exactly. That's my only chance. Oh, check again. Going to keep trying to run. What, what else can I do? Queen d8. My goodness. This guy's relentless. This guy's relentless. Let's put the knight back on the safe square. Queen d8. He actually had a very good move there. He had that one. Okay, let's push our pawn in the center. Center pawn. <laughs> Go. Oh, that's a free piece. We'll take it. We'll take that too. We'll take that too. 
Oh, don't mind if I do. We take those free pieces and he put himself in checkmate in one. We'll take that as well. <laughs> Absolutely calculated. Absolutely calculated. And look at that, guys. We are officially 600. Over 600. So let's keep going. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do. E4. You guys know the drill. You guys know the drill. Thanks for all the resubs. Crimson, Mikey Slice, Carrick's with the 10, uh, Orange Noof and Neprosta with the support. Um, D5, you know we're going to take it. That's an exchange. Take that immediately. Start with this knight. Tempo on the queen. Tempo on the queen. Okay, and you know, let's get the other knight out. Probably going to play d4 next. Get the bishops out if possible. Oh, we're going to go here. If he takes, we're going to take it back. We're going to take it back. And we've got to get this bishop developed. And we actually have a kind of an interesting position here where uh, I can't get my bishop to here or here. Or sorry, yeah, I can't get my bishop here or here with the pawn in front. Normally the pawn is here and bishop d3 makes sense, but I'm not really able to do that right now. Um, so it's sort of a unique position. Normally I would say after this move, maybe d4 instead of the knight makes more sense. You got to take the center. But now I'm not really able to take the center. So don't have bishop to c4 and I can't take the center. I think I have a couple options. Um, one would be this, although it's a move I have generally not played. Uh, the other would be this. And I think this one is a little bit more in line with the way we've been playing. I want to play bishop here, uh, pawn there, and then get the other bishop out. It's not as good as this, but, you know, it'll do. It'll do. Okay, he attacks our queen here. He attacks our queen. Where can our queen go? He's putting his knight in the center, so it's probably a good move. Um, let's move our queen. Free pawn? Yes. Do we see every free pawn in chess? No. Let's move our queen. Uh, e4. That's in the center. You're never going to see every free pawn. Oh, well, this move is nice and easy. Do I know that's a fork? Absolutely not. Would I play it anyway? Absolutely, yes. That's a fundamental. I got to take the center. Got to get this bishop developed. Oh, queen to d6. And would you look at that, guys? Would you look at that? After queen d6, queen and pawn attacking knight. Oh, we're going to take that. And which one were we going to start with? We're going to start with our pawn. This is my favorite part of the rules. Not only do I not know what a fork is, but I've been basically coerced into playing it because it's a good move fundamentally. So it's quite possible. And you guys, if you guys have been watching the series, you'll notice I have had lots and lots of tactics that have been in my games. And they've just been forcefully played by accident because, hey, it's a good move anyway. It's a good move anyway, but you look at this. Look at this pawn. It's going here, here, here. Is it like a checkers board or something? Now knight e7, I'm going to take it. What's going on? Oh, he's going to resign. There you go. Okay. e4. Knight f3. Okay, you guys have seen this. Bishop out. These are the vibes. We've played this, you know, 20, 30, 40 times before. Really. This is not new. Next rookie one. You know, if you leave use that pawn hanging, I think I will take it. I don't usually take it right away, but hey, if you leave it there for too long, I will grab it. But these moves are important to get. Okay, that's a capture. We always bring our bishop back, so it still exerts pressure in the center. Important. What's the rule when we get attacked? We always try to move to the center if possible. The center is these four squares. Can we go here? No. It's 
We're going to choose this one. This one's safe. Okay, f6, we're going to continue our development. We can't put our bishop anywhere here, so there's only one square for it. Here, followed by this, 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 h3. And if he plays bishop there, we'll go h3 right away. So hopefully you'll, you guys are able, as you're watching, to almost predict some of the moves that I'm going to play. Because I'm playing in a very similar style every single game. a6, um, we'll play rook here, we'll play rook here, and then we'll play h3. That's the point. It is, it is supposed to get to, to the level where you guys can guess the move almost before I play it. That is the point. Rook to the middle. And every time we see that, we play this move. Okay, now he's played a good move. You know, he's kept the bishop, he's kept the pin. That's a smart decision. We're going to do our random pawn push. Hello, procrastinator. Yes. I'm not necessarily shouting out every single sub and donation at the moment. Usually when I'm doing these streams, I try to focus on doing this because, you know, if it goes on YouTube at some point, I don't want to interrupt all the games and explanations with constantly shouting it out. So usually I, I play a bunch of games in a row and then I shout out everything at once. Um, that's, that's the idea. And I'm also not doing any song requests at the moment because we're sort of doing a, a more chill educational style stream right now. So I'm just going to leave it on the chess bra uh, lounge playlist. Um, all right, g5 play. Don't really know what he's up to. I think I'll kind of continue with these random pawn pushes over here. a5, probably c3 next. Probably c3 next. And the reason we want to c3 is, you know, we don't really have any other pawns to push. And hey, it attacks the center. Oh, that looks good. Why not g4? It weakens the king. That's a move we want to avoid in general, and it's a good habit not to play that move. Good habit not to play it. Okay, here, we're going to react to that and take it. And we're going to take this. And now it's our turn. Well, we're going to do something that we always, always do. Our turn, random pawn push, stuff in the center. E5 makes every bit of sense here. Every bit of sense. You know, there's there's nothing else we need to do. We have all our pieces developed. We have our escape square. It's time for things in the center now. E5, all about the center of the board. Okay, now he makes a great decision here. Full credit to him. He keeps the position closed instead of opening it up. I'm going to play the move e6. It's yet another move in the center. But full credit to my opponent. f5 is a great move. f5 is a great move. King e7. So he's playing really well, actually. Um, the thing is, all I'm doing is thinking about the center of the board here. I'm pushing the pawn. These are center squares that are now, you know, they pretty much belong to me. I'm going to go queen here. This, uh, you know, attacks the pawn, also gets the rook involved. Just gonna try to do everything sort of revolving around the center. Okay, bishop there. Now, how about the knight in the middle of the board? The longer list of the habits is just exclamation mark habits info. That should be the as long a list as you need. Okay, our rook's being attacked here. And rook c1 makes a lot of sense. It's another open file. And hey, it also hits the bishop. 
it also hits the bishop. Okay, he's he's done something. He's given us a free piece. We're going to take that. All the time. We're taking free pieces. Yeah, guys, knight c6 is not possible. Not possible. Okay, this is a recapture. We're going to take back. Okay, a check. King's got to find some sort of safety. Go king here. Generally, I advise uh, against going towards the center um, and moving your king, especially when there's queens on the board. <laughs> like, for example, him. <laughs> okay, queen there attacking our rook. Um, I'm just going to make a move that you know attacks his queen right back. But do I see that it's a fork? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. So just a good move anyway, and it's not like it wins any material. Um, he takes e5. Huh? Eh? That's a free piece. I live to take stuff like that. I live to take stuff like that. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Bishop there. Honestly, full credit to my opponent. He's threatening the rook, and I, I, I now actually have a choice. I now have a choice. If I take this knight, that is a free piece. Completely good move following the habits. If I take this piece, that is also a totally free piece following the habits. But if I take this one, it's a much different move. However, I think it's more natural to take this. Why? Because that was the last move played, and you always are playing reactive chess. That's right. So, rook there. That's a trade, but it's also a free piece. Also a free piece. Can't be missing that one. Free piece for me. And let's take some pawns. Let's take some pawns. Rook there, that's annoying. Let's stay in the center of the board. Let's stay in the center of the board. Let's take in the center of the board. Let's check. Let's see if we can uh, get this king. Let's get this king. He goes here. Got my rook attack now. Who is this guy, man? He's, he's annoying me. Hey. Hey. This guy's annoying as hell. This guy's annoying as hell. Put that bishop in the center. Jeez. Holy smokes. I can't get to meet this guy. Oh my goodness. That's actually very, uh, a very real experience, honestly. Like, not being able to meet a guy because of this. That's so real. As soon as the king goes here, if this was an endgame, how many times, like, when a bishop and queen are like this, do you just chase the king, like, ring around the rosy? It happens to me all the time, especially in bullet or something. But it really is true. Like, the king here attacking the rook, you saving the rook, suddenly your queen gets attacked. Of course, as a more proactive player, you're going to play e7, discovered attack, but that involves tactics and being proactive. When you're starting out, you're reactive. You don't have all those things ironed down ironed out it's it, it's very difficult to finish games sometimes because of that exact reason all right we're on to the next one e4 get back to basics here now i'm going to be psyched out every what <laughs> guys what could i say follow those fundamentals Follow those fundamentals, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to get you easy wins. Just follow my hab my building habits course, and, and you'll get wins just like this.
All right, let's try it again. So, so far, E6 has been played against me by one opponent. And the only opponent who played it resigned right after. So it seems like a bad omen for, for the French. For the French. It's unsurprising that the French are giving up, you know, without even playing the game. Um, knight there. Now we're going to protect. We're going to go there. Okay, now, we've seen this before. We're going to capture towards the center. B takes C3. And I'm going to get the bishop out. Okay, our bishop's getting attacked. If I go here, he can still take me. Not the end of the world, but I'm going to go here because the pawn is there. And look, I'm still attacking the center. That's exactly what we want to do. E6. Okay, I am analyzing this game after. Why? Because there's a pawn hanging here and you played d6. I believe that's a missed win. All right, uh, we castle ASAP. And let's play d3. Um, we just want to make room for the bishop. That's an exchange. That's an exchange. We're always going to take trades. And now we're going to continue. Bishop e3, we want rook here. And hopefully you guys know the drill. Rook here, queen here, rook there, h3. That's exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, you guys should expect the next couple moves. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay, pawn there, we capture towards the center for the first time. And hey, that's a, that's a capture. So we're going to take it by force if he, if he takes again. And there we go. Um, knight c6. Okay, so I'm gonna take my time and play that h3 move we've always been talking about. That's a capture. We're gonna take that. We are gonna take that. Careful, almost did a pre move. No, I disabled pre moves. I disabled pre moves. They're not enabled. I can't do them. So I took them off. That's that's what you should do when you're starting out. Take pre moves off because you might accidentally do one, and that's also bad. You don't even want to accidentally do one. Okay, let's play a pawn move and play here. So I definitely recommend just taking taking it straight off. Um, let's go d4. We're going to take the center here. And wow, he reacts like this. So because this was the last move, the reaction is we want to take this. We're going to react to his move. And then if we can take this, we will. Three moves on by default? I don't think so. I think they stay off by default. You have to turn them on. Um, We're going to take here. This is just, you know, us executing trade, trade, trades. It's off by default. Yeah. But a lot of people have, have trouble um, with, with pre-moves when they are on and they, you know, they accidentally pre-move. That's why I, I say, like, just turn them off. It's not worth it. You know, no point in having any scares. Okay, let's take. That is the last move, so we're going to react, take that. We could take here, but um, knight takes e5 is the slightly more natural move. Also, this was like uncovering an attack here. The point was we wanted to take on e5. Okay, goes here. It's our turn. Um, let's move this bishop. I'm going to put it in the center here. We're going to put it in the center here. And we're probably going to take this next. Okay. Um, oh, more pieces in the middle of the board. Let's go here. Okay, takes. Let's capture towards the center. And now that we're in an end game, guys, you guys know my king. My king is going to be making an entrance. My king is going to be making an entrance. Okay, he's attacking me. Hey, push, push. You can't catch me. Ha uh ha. -huh. Can you imagine like some sort of chase like this? 
Oh, he plays a great move. Okay, push him, baby. Now, remember, when... What did I say? I said, push, 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 push. That's all you do. You see how easy it was to win? Just by pushing? All you do is push past pawns. You win the game at this elo, I'm telling you. It's a hack. It's a hack. You have a pawn that's passed in the end game, shove that thing up the board. You will win the game. You will win the game. Okay, let's take that free rook. My opponent offered me a draw. Accept draw? Question mark? Well, guys, he's not even following FIDE rules. He's not even following FIDE rules. According to FIDE rules, you have to make a move and then offer a draw. Of course I'm not going to accept an invalid draw offer. Kidding me? Okay. 550. E4, E5. This is typical. This is our plan. Bishop there. Now, in the past, when we've seen, you know, knight here, bishop there, we've got knight here and bishop there in reaction. So, when I see this, keep something in mind. If I go knight here, and he goes knight there hitting my pawn, and I go knight there, I run into knight g5. Knight g5. And we've talked about how knight g5 with that bishop there just wrecks me. So I'm going to play knight to c6. I'm going to play knight to c6. The reason I chose this was that if he, you know, put the knight here, okay, I put my bishop there. If he puts this knight here, then I can develop. If he goes queen there, and I have to, have to think that he mouse slipped. This guy didn't play this or this. Have you guys ever seen queen g4? Is this theory? Let's play our knight move. We're not going to be phased by his nonsense. Queen g4 is like, he's not scholars mating anyone. I, he's not a scholar, mate. He's not a scholar, mate. And now he's disconnected. So queen g4, mouse slip into rage quit. <laughs> not a good start for our opponent here. Fundamental chess once again beats the tilty mind of an online player. Okay, <laughs> looks like uh, it's going to be uh, another win for the good guys. <laughs> guys, it's literally too easy. It's actually too easy. Building habits, you follow these rules. Look how quickly your rating is going to go up. It's actually too easy right now. Just brutal. Just brutal. There is no analysis. I think the game has to last at least four moves. But we've run, in, run into two guys recently that can only last three moves. <laughs> they can only last three moves. All right. We got a 676. This guy means business. Okay. We've seen all this before. Knight's out first. My bishop is going to go there next. Yep. We're going to get castled, castle ASAP. We're going to play d3. If he goes here, we're going to trade it. That's right. How many times have you seen this, guys? This is like a, a regular thing. They put the bishop there, you take it. And the most common thing I see after they take is they're really, really eager to play d5. I don't know. It's just... It's like the main thing. Okay, we're going to go here. Next move, we're going to go there. Okay, bishop e3. I hope these moves are not surprising. Everyone should be sort of expecting this by now. Um, we, we always start with this bishop, castle d3. Okay, anytime there's a trade, we want to take it, so that we will. And we'll go queen d2 next. Uh, after queen d2, we're going to play rook d1. We're going to play h3. Very, very similar stuff. Okay, he goes here. Again, uh, I'm not going to let it phase me. You know, I'll, 
I'll, I'll play my own moves over here at some point, but let's first complete all the requirements in development. Okay, that is a capture. Let's take that. Okay, and here we are. We've done everything. You know, we're, we've gotten out of the opening solid shape. Um, now it's time to push some pawns. I would say knight here, c3, d4 is one plan. We've almost always tried to push pawns in the center where possible. Uh, the other plan would be putting the rook on an open file. That makes a lot of sense. Rooks belong in open files. I'm going to choose this one trying to play c3, d4, because we pretty much tried to do that every single game. Rook takes a2. How annoying is this guy? You're just going to take my pawns like that, dude? You're just going to take my pawns like that, dude? Let's go rook to a1. Let's go rook to a1. That's brutal. I just lost the pawn there. Yeah, c3, <laughs> unfortunately, is a little rough now. Okay, we're going to take that back. And I think I'm still going to go for my plan of c3, d4. I don't have much else. That's what I'm sort of committing to by going here. Okay. Executing a plan. Okay, that's a capture. We're always going to take captures. We know that. So that's a move you don't have to think about. Don't have to think about. Knight takes and, well, I don't know. Can we do this move? Let's count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if there are ever four attackers and four defenders, does that mean you can go for it? Yes or no? Who knows the answer? So if you have more attackers or more defenders than attackers, it's obvious. But if there's the same number, does anyone know? Wow, chat is actually split literally down the middle. And in fact, I would say there's more no's than yeses. Bronze chat. I, I've never seen this. I thought this would be like spam of the correct answer, but it's like half and half. Yes and no. <laughs> okay, well, I'll play d4 for science. For science. Okay, that's a capture. We're going to take it. Well, uh, I know that my opponent was probably in the chat saying no when I asked that question. Uh, where are all the naysayers now? Where, <laughs> excuse me? Any, any no in chat? Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes. I win. Four defenders, four attackers. That's safe. Okay, he went here. Let's make a threat. Let's bring the rook over and attack that pawn. Am I really attacking? No, no, I'm the defenders. So d4 is my move, and I'm defending it one, two, three, four times. Black is attacking it one, two, three, four times. Okay, he's pushing the pawn. I don't see why we don't want to take it. Remember, if uh, our knight goes there, it's protected twice, so nice and secure. OK, 
Okay, queen here. That's something we want to trade. We always want to go for trades. Always want to go for trades. Now, five. I would say this is under 12, my rule. So let's start thinking about getting the king involved. Let's start thinking about getting the king involved. Might not always be the best, but hey, pieces in the middle, king involved, going to be safe. It's an endgame. We need the king. We need the king. Okay, let's go king here. We can't, we can't go king here. Got to get the king involved somehow. Oh, missed win, nerd. Uh, let's get the king up towards the center. And even further, all towards the center. All towards the center. Activate the king in the endgame. I can't stress how important that is. Okay, that's a trade. That's a trade. And all because we brought our king up to the middle, we're going to take a free piece. You know we are. And boom, look at that. We're winning because of that king. There, there's just nothing better you can do with your king in the endgame than activate it and bring it to the middle. Start using your king as a weapon in an endgame. It's no longer that, you know, a diva piece that you need to protect at all costs. No, suddenly the king is a very serious, aggressive attacking piece. You need to use it. Um, okay, king there. Let's bring that king literally in the center. Yeah, basically the entire game, the king is like some scared kid in high school getting bullied and he has a glow up in university. And now he's, you know, captain of the football team straight up. So get in there and command the battlefield, orchestrate, you know, call the plays and snap the ball. Let's take pawns. All about taking pawns. Remember, king in the middle, use your pieces to attack and take pawns in the end game. That's the main focus. Main focus for us, especially at this level. Okay, we're just looking to take this. Um, I think we can activate the knight, get it in the middle of the board. Center squares, center squares. And there we go. We have not been winning every single one of them. We've gotten a couple free wins. Oh, we got a weak connection here. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can continue the good vibes. D4, let's take that. We we've got to take. Okay, knight here. Um, knight here. And I can't bring my bishop to where I, I frequently put it. So. I have to think about something new this game. In general, what I've been doing, okay, well here, I was captured towards the center, so it goes there, always a6, and then captured towards the center, so we'll start with that. And now I can't do this, so what I have been doing is I've been going like this and just putting it here and here. And that's more modest, but we, can, we just simply can't get bishop c5. We can't get bishop c5. Always a6. Yeah, whenever a bishop goes here to pin our knight, we always play h6 or a6 immediately. Okay, let's continue the development of castle ASAP there. Uh, that's a capture. We must, we must. Knight takes. What do I need to do? Get castled ASAP. Knight takes c6. And I must save my queen. Let's put the queen in the center. And unfortunately, my opponent has uncorked a fork, which I am not used to. And neither is he, apparently. Uh, okay. Queen f3. Okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. So he didn't know it either. 
You know why he took that? Because it was free. He took a free pawn. He didn't do it because it was a fork. He, he's still following the habits. He's still following the habits. Okay, we're going to follow our own rules. H6, just like this. Takes, we're going to take that right back. And you guys know what's going to happen. We need to get the rooks into the middle. I can't quite do this move because the knight's attacking it. But, you know, in general, I do want to start with this one. Probably a few random pawn moves incoming. Okay, I have to move my queen. This looks like the, the square that still influences the center the most. Attacks those three squares. Like, in general, I'm not going to pick this move when I have this move available because it just influences, impacts the center a lot more. So queen c5. Uh, okay, well, you guys know what I'm going to have to do. After night there, I'm going to have to take a free piece. Oh, and let's take that back. It's just unfair. It's just unfair. That's a discovered attack. That's completely unfair. Well, let's follow the fundamentals. Rook to the middle. Guys, those blunders are going to happen. You're not going to you know, see every single tactic. Um, let's move our rook. But, you know, from time to time, you are going to get KO'd, and that was a KO right there. Yeah, okay. Let's take, let's take that pawn. Okay, we're just going to keep taking for now. Okay, and, I mean... I guess we'll I guess we'll just keep taking. I'm just taking sort of one after the other. Remember, in the end game, what do I want to do? <sighs> take take pawns, attack pawns. He's still got a queen, so I can't really just like walk my king to the middle of the board like nothing's wrong. But you know, I just gobbled up three pawns. I gotta be feeling pretty good about myself. Queen there. I mean, let's move this king or something. A check. I'm gonna go here. Why? Just because generally I advise against moving the king towards the middle when there's queens on the board still. H4. Uh oh. This guy knows his his fundamentals. He knows what he's doing. We gotta just make a move here. Let's threaten the pawn. Well, the pressure on it, I guess. Yeah, opponent's playing well right now. Absolutely. Playing well. Check. We're going to go back. I'm sort of shuffling here if he's checking me back and forth. That's the plan. It makes more sense that, um, that we just do that. Okay, let's attack the pawn. Jeez. Slow down. Holy smokes. What a thought by Buddy. To do this, I just got KO'd there. I just got KO'd there. Yup. Rook takes E6. A huge move from Buddy Samir. I'm getting destroyed, guys. I'm getting destroyed. Well, I'm just going to have to do my best. Remember, it's really important in the end game to check. You should always check wherever possible. So I'm just going to do my best here and try to check. Checks are really, really important, guys. Nice. Really, really important. <laughs> hey, what can I say, boys? Yeah, sometimes you get a little carried away. I mouse slipped. It's going for rook f1. A happy accident. A happy accident. You know? <laughs> no hanging pieces. I mouse slipped. What do you want me to do? I mouse slipped. 
You're allowed to hang a piece if you mouse slip. Jeez, give a guy a break. Okay, we got a 670. We got E4. E4. Knight F3. We've done this before. Habit. Knight F3. Okay, and this is the first time we've seen this opening. What am I going to do when I see that? Obviously, we're going to take. We're going to take that, and we're going to get the knight out. The knights look good here. If I can play bishop c4, I will. Bishop c4 is my preferred next move. Okay. 670 elo, by the way. I'm telling you guys, these fundamental series, building habits, look at us. Look at us. We're golden. We're golden. We are golden. Hello? Is Antonio okay? Uh, anyone from Brazil in the chat? Can can we get a check on Antonio? Brazil, porra. Can we get a check on a uh, friendly Antonio? I might need to uh, call some of my homies from the Santa Ifigenia uh, to check on him. Okay, that's a, a trade. That's uh that's a trade, and uh, we're going to take the bishop here. That's a free piece. That's a free piece. And we're not going to forget the fundamentals. Castle ASAP. Castle ASAP. Queen out. Rook over. Rook over. Fundamentals. My goodness. Antonio needs a wellness check. Oh, no. Oh no, Antonio. Oh, this isn't a good look. Oh man, Antonio is on tilt. He's at the casino. This is it for Antonio. That's a free piece. Oh man, poor Antonio. <laughs> poor Antonio. This is rough. This is rough. That's a free piece. That's a free piece. This guy's ruining my accuracy. I had to take a free piece. There was a meaning one there. Damn it. I'll check him in the center of the board. <laughs> Get the king involved now, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, bud. We're going to go e5. Um, let's go knight f6. Okay, guys, unfortunately, I think we might get uh, destroyed here. I think we might get destroyed here. Guys, we have to take it. Oh, no. Oh, no. We have to put our knight back. We're going to get clapped here. The pro stole 6,500 bits, and if I can survive this... And those 6,500 are going to be very well placed. This Vienna is killing us, guys. We, we got we to gotta actually come back prepared for this the next time. My goodness. This is, this is destructive. Oh, man. Okay, 94. Well, the first thing is we got to get these pieces out. And I just don't see a good way to do it. I'm going to go D6. So I'm going to try to break up the team in the middle. And take here, get my knight out, get my bishop out. D6 is the move I've been going for to free my pieces. Okay, takes. I think we just take it back. I think we take it back. My next move is going to be this. Next move is going to be this. 
So the, the first time we did the stream, we, we tried to get to 500 in one day. Then we had the goal of 550. Now we have the goal of 650. And I think this is going to be our, our, our last game regardless, guys. We always set that goal. We got to win or go home. Knight F6. This looks solid. So let's get to 650 for this edition of the, uh, the Habit stream. And there'll be another one on Friday. There'll be another one on Friday. Bishop there? Hello? That's a free piece for me, guys. That's a free piece. Yes, this is looking good. Fundamentals, don't let me down now. That is a free piece on E4. It's looking good. It's looking good. How did I start at a low rating? Um, well, I had chess.com reset my rating to 400, but not... Not until I played some games on the account first to make sure that there wouldn't be any high variance, like plus 200, minus 400, none of that. It, it only gains and loses uh, rating, you know, appropriately. As if you actually were rated 400. So it's a, it's a pretty perfect simulation, in my opinion. Um, so we got to save our knight. We're going to move here. So we're still attacking the center. Whenever our knight goes to the middle and gets attacked, if we just go back, that's fine. We're going to castle next turn. Castle next turn. Then we're going to get our bishop out, rook to the middle, continue from there. Okay, uh, uh, an early check. An early check. I think queen here makes the most sense, you know. Um, bishop here, I have this phobia of bishop there when the pawn can go to d5. So I've learned about that. I'm not going to play bishop b6. And also maybe blunders a pawn, but two pieces when a pawn's on d4. I no longer, no longer make that mistake. No longer make that mistake. Okay, he goes there. We know we're going to go for a trade, and we know we're going to castle. Trade important. Finally castled. Finally castled. And let's see. So this move is going to be my next one. I always put my bishop there, followed by rook here, rook here, h6. So that should be what you guys are looking to do. If I can't get this uh, going, then, then we'll have to look at the next best thing. Okay. Bishop out. You know, controlling the center here. We'll bring the rook to e8 and to d8. Why h6? We always go h6. We never, ever, once we finish development, so rook e8, Rook d8, that's development. We're all done. Every piece has moved once, all contributing to the center, every single one of them. Um, once we do this, the next thing that we do every single game, and this is bar none, I've never, never once uh, forgotten to play this move, is, okay, let's go for a trade. Because we're going to play h6. And h6 means that we are never going to get back rank mated. It also keeps pieces out of g5. But the main thing is to always have a square for your king, and it's really, really important to do that. Okay, knight goes over there. Let's bring our bishop back. Again, when we get attacked with a knight on the side of the board, when we have to go back, if we can go back all the way, we do. But if my pawn was on h7, I would go back to g6. So pawn push. If I can go to a central square, that's what we do. We always pick central squares first. Knight d4, knight d5. In this case, I can't go to either of them. What's the next best thing? Well, this is still controlling one of the center squares, so we'll do knight e7. Take free pieces, not free pawns. Pawns are not pieces. So 97, um, getting out of the way. I think that uh, coming up, we're going to be some, some pawn pushes over here. Okay, it's actually perfect. He did this. We're going to react a5. a5 looks good. Probably go b6 next. And these are those... A random pawn moves that you do on the other side of the board, and we are looking solid so far. B6. Is a king a piece? Absolutely. Okay, let's take that. Um, so we take that. The knight's being attacked. We've got to move our knight. Um, 
Well, taking here makes the most sense because, hey, one, two, three, one, two. There we go. All based on the center. Like the entire game, my pieces have been aimed towards the center, contributing to the center, attacking the center. Knight there, that's a trade. Got to go for a trade. Now that we're in an end game, the priority should be running that king to the middle of the board. King f8, king e7, king e6, king e5. That's our plan. What starts the end game? I didn't really have a rule for that. So I sort of made up a rule that if it's the piece material is less than 12 points uh, on both sides, then it's an end game. Or maybe if it's less than 12 points on one side, it's an end game. Something like that. And the queens have to be off the board. Those are, those are the two rules. If the queens are on the board, you got to be careful about bringing your king into the middle. Look at that. We'll get a KO for that in a pro so. There we go. 6,500 bits from the Prosto is going to the right place. We are now 650 plus rated. Hey guys, just a reminder that Building Habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.